get over here to put the safety. All right, Sanjay, I think we are live. That's why I are you there? I'm here. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So um, let me just see if we can get. All right. So welcome and uh, welcome everyone that's tuning in on Facebook. I uh, we're doing this live here as a one-off, which I'm looking to. You know, maybe if this is of use to others, we could do this from time to time. But uh, just grateful that uh, Sandit has been willing to join us on this one. Uh, so what are we doing here? We're looking to do, uh, I've been chatting to Sanjit today and his uh, uh, last few days. And I've been looking at his, his progress, his training progress, his body shots. And there's been some great progress that he's made. And it was asking me for some feedback. And as I was giving the feedback, I thought, you know what? I could do this as a live, um, as what I would call a progress check-in or a body progress review. Now, there are times when we can get on a training program and you can just keep training and training and training and training and doing the same thing, repeat over and over again, expecting to get different results, but, but we don't, right? Because we keep doing the same thing. And so what I wanted to do was to uh, give some progress, uh, give some feedback live of what I would do if I was in person with somebody and we're looking at their physique, we're looking at their progress, and we want to say, this is what you need to do more of, this is what you need to um, avoid, this is how you can do some correction. So, Sandy, you've got some weights there with you, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, I'm just going to very quickly first, let's see if I can show uh, a preview of, of what Sanjit looked like before. Uh, let's see. Not that one. Not that one. These are these are some shots I was taking from this morning. But let's see. If you guys can all see these photos that I'm showing, these are all Sanjit's um, journey. I'm trying to see, look for your before. There we are. So that's Sanjit before. Can we all see this? Can you guys see this on Facebook? Let me know on Facebook if you can see it. Uh, I'd love to know if the screen is showing and sharing his before photos. Uh, and on these before photos, you can see that's where he was 81.4 kilos. Now he's you know, more or less maintained see. this weight. Uh, I'd love to know. He's, he's more or less maintained this weight and this physique for a good number of years. All right, so Sudhir can see it. All right, brilliant. So you can see it. So this is kind of Sun's physique and he's been going to the gym. He's been, according to him, eating healthy. I'm doing all, I'm avoiding the bad foods, but his physique was not shifting. Uh, when he came to visit us uh, here in uh, December, it was not too far from here. It was around about 80, 81, 82 kilos. What, what weight were you when you came here, Sanjay? Uh, I was about um, 81. 81. So this is 81.4. Mm -hmm. You were 81 as well when you came here in December? Yeah, about that. And what's your weight today? 67.7. 67.7? Yeah, 67.7. So you've lost like 13 kilos? About that, yeah. From, from December, which is epic. So, so what does 13 kilos look like? So Sanjit, if you can come close to the screen, this was Sanjit uh, before. Uh, let's have a look now, Sanjit. Can you show us your physique now? Can you take off your top so I can give you some feedback? All right, so that was Sanjit before. Get in some good lighting, come on. Show us, show us your good side. Smile as well. All right, it's just you and me. Forget that there's an audience on Facebook. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. No you mind. It's all good. in conversation. Sorry. Yeah. So now give us, give me some guns. Show me your guns. Let me see your physique. All right. Uh, tighten your, tighten your core. Okay. Let it hang. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, guys. So mm -hmm. if I'm being honest here and everybody's watching, what I'm going to tell Sanjit, what's really encouraging for your physique 
is uh, I'm going to tell you to shave the carpet off your chest, all right? So <laughs> you're going to, uh, honestly, I recommend you shave it because then you'll really see definition that you're not getting to see now, right? Okay. So as you clean that off, shave it, wax it, whatever you need to do, but I highly recommend you do it. Now you want to get in, you want to get into the shape of your life for your 42nd birthday, right? Yeah. So in 40 years, in 41 years, he hasn't got the physique that he's wanted. And now at 42, he's 41, turning 42, and he's getting close to that physique. He's lost 13 kilos from January, after he went back, after he went to India, came back, went back to Zambia. From about January to now, it's about 13 kilos of him wiped off. Uh, Jag is suggesting waxing with a big thumbs up. Uh, Charlene saying no waxing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not clear what they're saying. Okay, uh, we'll find out which, whichever one is more painful, but whichever one you can okay. do quicker. Do that. All so right. that's the first thing is to check the physique. Then uh, is to really see that because results are addictive and results are encouraging, right? Uh, and Charlene wants a video of the whole waxing process happening. So uh, results are, are addictive, results are encouraging. I really mean it. And we can be our own internal driver, right? So a good thing also I tell people, I tell Sanjit, is a lot of us, we're trying to wait for our full transformation to happen, to get this complete, ready, Rocky Four body at the end, or whatever you want to call it at the end. And then we create a lot of this pressure. And I say, take people along you, along with you on your journey as you're going through your transformation. These are your well wishers. These are people that see that this is an ordinary human being with a busy schedule who's taking it on. Like, I don't know how many of you guys during lockdown are making progress. This guy is making great progress. Uh, a lot of us during lockdown, we're doing a lot of training. Uh, I think some people are making more progress in their fitness over lockdown than not. Uh, we have people on our April challenge, we have people on our February challenge, uh, we have people live here like uh, Preeti, Jag, uh, Ambika, Charlene, who've, who are all on the challenges or who've done the challenge. And uh, we have Lais who lost 14 kilos. She was already light. She's lost 14 kilos in a transformation. I think Lais, we've got to do one of these next with you if you're, if you're up for it. Uh, and so uh, it'll be great to go through your physique, your transformation. Uh, we've got Mark Edwards on, who's also done a challenge before and caused amazing results. So we've gone through this. Now, now just hold your hands up here. I'm going to give you some initial feedback. Now with your training, so one thing that sticks out to me is what's missing is there isn't that so much of a V-shape, right? So what's called your latimus dorsi, your back. If you turn around, turn around for us, face the back. So, uh, can I just confirm on Facebook? Are you guys seeing Sanjit's image? Because I can, I think it's showing. No. Ah, oh, Prashanta surfaced. Oh. Let me see. Speak of you. And I want to pin that video. Uh, do you guys see Sanjit now? Do you see him? All right. Okay, so there's, uh, is every time I speak, it's changing to me. I need to. Okay, so. All right, one second, guys. I'm just trying to make sure that you can see as I am giving this feedback. Okay, so there's Sanjit. We can see his progress. Turn around to the front. Sorry, that wasn't shown initially. Okay, so there's Sanjit's uh, rear. Um, so the thing that we can say here around Sanjit's physique, the main thing that I want us all to get is that there isn't uh, the V shape, right? Which we want. So a few things I'm gonna give you Sanjit to focus on, right? That you can work on, which will really make a difference is uh, have you got your dumbbells there? Yeah. So the first thing is a lot of the exercises that you're doing, right? What people miss in making a difference is they're doing exercises for the sake of doing exercises sake. They're rather than focusing on what is the exercise or workout that focuses on building this muscle. So you need to do some probably compound exercise training. So when I was looking at your thousand rep routine and some of what you're taking on, you might be doing push-ups on one day and then a lot of uh, core work and then a lot of leg stuff 
and then the next day again you have a push-ups or something else and you're neglecting uh, working on the different sides or aspects of your chest. Similarly here, your shoulders and your back, those are neglected. Now, I don't know how easy it will be at home where you don't have a pull-up bar, but if you have like a lat pull-down machine or a pull-up bar, or if you somehow suspend yourself upside down and you can pull dumbbells up, that was, that's the only thing that's going to work on your lats. So I'll give you some example. If you get your dumbbells there, First of all, we want yeah. to build your shoulders. So if you get your, like get the 10 kg ones or if you have slightly lighter than that. Hey, you're not sucking in your belly. Can you let your belly sag? It's sagging. It's sagging. All right, awesome. Hold your uh, weights to your side like you're doing a shoulder press. Shoulder press. Yeah, you're doing a shoulder press. So hold them up there to the side, right? and uh, do a normal shoulder press how you do it. Just, just do it normal, right? Not like you're being assessed. So if you were doing, you're is, doing 100 reps of shoulder way, press. This is the way I do it normally. Sorry? This is the way I do it normally. Okay. All right. Uh, do your bicep curls the way you were doing them this morning before I interjected. I want, I want you to do them exactly how you were doing them before I corrected you on something. You were going for your uh, hundred. Those, Imagine you go those, for your hundred. How would you go for your hundred? Those, those were the heavier ones. Yeah. This is the, this is the right weight. Okay, so go for the heavier ones because I want that movement. People, I want people to see what was going wrong there that we okay, can work on do, and that we can do, rectify. Just do this. Yeah. So, so what was happening is Sandra was doing these bicep curls. Now what's happening here with the workout is you're using a lot of swinging. And whenever it comes to a workout, if you're doing, if you're moving your weight using either momentum and you're dropping them down with gravity, you're not engaging muscle. So when it comes to muscle isolation, muscle isolation means we want to hit a particular muscle and we want to make sure it is fully being hit and engaged as best as possible. And the way we have to do that is to have really slow and controlled movements. And what's also happening with that movement is before he's lowering the, the one on the left, he's swinging the right one up. Before he's lowering the one on the right, he's swinging the left one up. And so let's now do them controlled. Do one at a time, right? And as you bring in, you can bring in that little twist. Come down lower. Now there you, you drop down to the gravity. Now come down slower. The, the, the eccentric part of your movement needs to be controlled. That, sl slow that down even more. Slow that down, slow, 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 hold it. I want you to like pause it. Like, let me see some breaks, some visual breaks in you coming down. That's it, right? So doing something like that, if you count how many seconds each rep is taking, let's start, I'll count one, two, three, three seconds, you finished a rep, right? You need to take six seconds, Sanjit. So let's do a six second rep. Let's go for a six second rep. One, two, three, four, that's still too fast. So what does six seconds look like? One, two, come up slow as well, come up slow as well. Take three seconds to get to the top. One, two. Okay, starting two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the other side. One, two, as you're doing this, you tighten your core. Three, four, five, and six. Now, doing that, doing 20 of those will be way more impactful than doing 100 swingers right? So 20 of those. This is why form makes such a difference. And what we call TUT, time under tension. So the time under tension that you're subjecting that muscle to is what creates microfiber tears in our muscle tissue. And we need to create that. And when you're, when you're swinging it, you're using momentum and you're using gravity, which means the muscle is only firing at the start to kick off the movement. And then it might engage slightly on the way down. What we want to do is use as much muscle so you want to do it as though you're eliminating gravity and you're eliminating momentum. Can you go again? Give us about uh, three reps on each side with a, with a second count of six. Four, five, six. Let's go. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for those of you that have joined, what we're doing here is I'm doing a progress review and update on Sanjit. And I want to give an example to those people that have done the Fit Banker Challenge before. Sanjit did the Fit Banker Challenge in 2015. He lost what, five, six kilos weight maybe? Five. Why he lost five kilos only 90 days. After he came here to visit us in December, maybe him seeing what we're eating, how we're eating, our daily walks, training, or his own impetus and internal drive and will to say, you know what, effort, this is it. And uh, he's gone back and he's gone from 81 kilos down to 67. So 13 kilos has disappeared off Sanjit in 90 days, right? In just over 90 days. And now, and his fat percentage has come down to 12%. To put that into context, he was about 20 something percent fat. Uh, do you remember your earlier fat percentage? Um, earlier fat percentage was 21, 22. 21, 22 down to 12%, which is 9% body fat has gone off him. And just so you know, the healthy range for somebody his age is 11 to 19. And the guy is now at 12. So he's about to enter what's called athletic range. The athletic range for his age and his height and, and gender and physique is going to be somewhere between 4% and 9% or 4 and 10, between 4 and 10. The moment he gets into single digit, you'll very visibly see a six pack, which you can begin to see uh, the precursor off. Uh, and my advice to him at the start of this call was that he needs to shave his, uh, his chest and his belly off so that you can really get down to see the, the toning in the skin. And that itself is encouraging. The visual progress that we get to see itself is encouraging. So the exercises that I'm going to say that you do, Sanjit, I don't know if you can take note or I'll, I'll take note here, right? But these are some of the things that I think in implementing them will make a difference. And in terms of implementing them, what will also make a difference is the style. And what I mean by the style is you want to do what we call compound exercises, right? Compound exercise means... Uh, let's just say we work on, on your shoulders, right? So let's start off with the 10 kilo. If you get the 10 kilo, we're going to do some compound work that's going to hammer the front of your shoulders as well as the posterior, the back uh, of your shoulders. So get the 10 kilos and let's start off with the shoulder press. So from your physique, in terms of feedback, if I were to give this guy feedback, I'd say the stuff we need to work on is we want to broaden the shoulders we want to increase his V, which means his lats, his latimus dorsi. So these muscles here, right? We want to increase these. Uh, so so let, let's just work on those two for now, for this purpose of this video. All right, so let's start with this. You're going to start with the shoulder press. Hold them at 90 degrees, right? And, and let's go. What we're going to do is we're going to go together, bring them to the top, right? You bring them to the top, you come down, and you're going to do slow movement like that, and you're going to do about 20 of them. Or if it's really heavy, you get to about 12. That's three. So let's assume now you've got to 12, right? If you're finding that you've got to 12 and, the, and you can still keep going, then it's probably too light a weight. If you're going slow, you're starting to go faster again. So, so keep the count going, right? Keep the count between four and six seconds. You want to be doing a rep. Take between four to six seconds. You can even take up to eight seconds if you really want to hammer it. Right, the increased TUT time under tension is what's going to work on your physique. All right, so you've done 12 now without resting. Uh, that weight have you got lighter weight than that? No, okay. Now, without resting, you need to get down and do what's called a bent over row, so not a bent over um, reverse uh, shoulder flies. So, hold those weights down in front of you with your. Your, your upper body tilted down at about 65 degrees. Right, so face, face out the window, face out the window, so I can see your side, yeah. Some more, turn some more. Yeah, that's fine, okay. Tilt a bit more, right? And now you're gonna bring, no, no, that's too much. Come back up a bit, just there, yeah. Now from there, with your elbows out, pull back. So you wanna feel your shoulder blades are pinching together. If you cannot feel that your shoulder blades are pinching together like you're trying to hold something. So the weight here looks a bit heavy. It looks a bit heavy because you can't pause at the top, right? So what I want you to do is to be able to pause at the top. So 
So if the weight, it might be that the weight is heavy. And if, if it is heavy, then you might need to just get some lighter weights. Uh, I'll just show you a quick demo here. So hey, everyone that's joining, we're just doing a quick, uh, you know, body progress review. So you're gonna hold weights like this. I'm gonna be at this angle and you can see my elbows out here. All right, excuse me, can I? And we're gonna hold it up there like this, okay? And you should be able, if you cannot hold it up, then the weight is too heavy for you, right? With your shoulders, it's very crucial. You don't go heavy because you could damage that. So you'd hold it like this out there and bring it down. Now that's something that you need to work on which I'm giving this specifically to Sanjit in his case, because that's something I want him to develop. As Kanea doing, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're doing the deadlift? Come, let me take that. Okay, so thank you Kanea. So what you want to do is work on thickening your back. You will thicken your back with that. You will thicken your shoulders. Uh, they're also great for people that love boxing uh, because you're going to generate a lot of strength and push from that part of your shoulder. And, um, uh, and also lat pull down. But compound means you do 20 or you do 12 of those heavy and you go straight into this one and you do again 20, right? And, and, and then you rest, so don't rest in between. So we're hitting one muscle, we're hitting different heads of it. Um, okay, uh, any questions that you have, Sanjit? Anybody that's watching, any questions that you have around his physique or something that you see? So those of you that just joined, this is Sanjit who's lost about 13, 14 kilos and has gone from 20 something percent fat down to 12%. Tiger, come. Can I join me? Come. We do the consultation together. Any questions, Sanjit? Um, what, 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 yeah, what, what about, look at your physique. You, said, you tell me yourself, what, do you want to, what would you love to change or develop or shift? Yeah, so basically more on the... Um, lats and uh seeing that right now it's not a good time to go to the gyms and stuff like that uh because of the coronavirus uh, pandemic so if there is a way to do some home workouts uh which will get the lats uh you know built up pretty quickly so something else easy. you can do for that is the lying down on your tummy um reverse snow angels okay yeah. that's something yeah. that you can do you can do reverse snow angels um, yeah. if you have, if you can do, uh, also, if you remember, we did this workout where we had a towel and yeah. you're arched up and you're pulling the towel in. That's one yeah. thing you can do. If you have resistance bands, you tie your resistance band in front to something, hold it shoulder width apart, the resistance band, a resistance band, and then pull that into you. Right. So you'd be bent down forward or you'd be lying on the ground. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Got it. So those would replace. Uh, a lat pull down machine or a pull up bar, right? And, and if you don't do that, that muscle just doesn't get hit. It just doesn't get engaged, right? Muscle isolation is about how do we focus in on that and how do we hammer that particular muscle and physique. Uh, the other thing I would say is, were well, you talking about your love handles, the little stuff on the side, right? No, I, was, I was talking about getting the eight pack in. The eight pack, but you got a little yeah. fat, all of us get a little fat gathers around our midsection, our abdomen. And I was saying to you that, that right there on the right, there's just a little bit of chubbiness there. Now you can't do what's called spot reduction. You can't do spot reduction with our body fat. So that's why your overall body fat has reduced from 21 to 12%. And by reducing that, you're seeing that your whole physique is coming into shape, but you could still do something to hammer on the side. So if you get the heavier weights, like the 15s or the 17s and hold them to your side, Morning, Kimberly. Morning, Salil. Morning, morning, Sati. Morning, Jenny. Morning, Jignesh. Morning, Bharat. Yeah, now you hold those to your sides. Now I want you to go from side to side, rocking this, right? Leaning. Right? Okay. So what's happening here, guys, is when you go to one side, it's very easy to use the heavier weight and allow that to pull you down and then lift up. Allow that to pull you down and lift up. Now what I want you to do is do this control, Sanjit. So start again. As you're going down, as you're going down to your left, I want your right, I want you to feel that you're tightening your right and that thing is holding like it is controlling and then it should pull in. And when you come to the midpoint, you engage your left side and then your left side should hold you and control you. And then your left should again, pull you back in. You, you need to feel that you're tensing that area, that region of the side of your core to work on it. 
And if you're not doing that, if you're not feeling that, you're not engaging that muscle and it turns into rocking. It turns into using momentum and gravity instead of using muscle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Another thing, looking at your physique, if you want to focus on this is guys, this is the aesthetic side of coaching on your physique, your chest, right? If you want your chest to be a bit more out, and I think you could do with a bit more V shape in the chest, right? Yeah. So the bottom of your chest to be a bit more out and to be up. A thing that would be great for you is decline bench press. Now, if you don't have a decline bench, the way you replicate that is you do it with your hands on an elevated platform. So on the edge of a bench, right? So on the edge of your bed. So if you can just demo there, use the bed for now. The bed is not ideal because it's not firm, right? But like that, exactly. All right, move your legs back, move your butt low. Yeah, now what's the only issue here is that your shoulders are not directly above your hands. So you want to move them a bit more forward. Okay, and then the main thing here so that you hammer and widen your chest is you want your arms wider. So this is going to be a broad grip, right? So your hands need to be further apart. So it's a bit of a broad grip. And then you want to go in, right? Keep your butt low and go in. Keep your butt low and go in. Now you can't do that really well against the bed because it's soft, but I just want to demo for people that are watching. And you can do this against the edge of your, your garden ledge or a concrete pillar or a, a bench that you put on the side. And that will give you the widening V shape from the front for your chest. Okay, an alternate one you can do if you have it is uh, uh, dips. So if you can find, if you have two railings that you could hold on the side, or if you have what's called that the dip rack, uh, those of us in the UK or, or elsewhere, you might have some poles, you can order a dip rack from Amazon, you plonk it in your house, you would grip on the side. And while that is mainly focused on working your triceps, it's designed for your triceps, it hits your tricep more when, you're, when your elbows are back, right? That's when you're really engaging your triceps. But if you open it out and you do the same dip, it's also pulling this muscle here, right? And as you're coming up, use your chest to tighten, com compress and compact your chest to be using your chest muscles, your pectorals to work. Because our pecs effectively have three regions. There's the upper, the mid, and the lower, right? To hammer the, the top part, you'd be doing decline push-ups. So your feet up and your hands down, right? That would hammer the top of your chest. Uh, and if you want to have them at the bottom of your chest, which is what I'm saying we should work on developing for you, it should be wide grip and uh, incline push-ups. Make sense? Got it. Okay, cool. And then the other one is the core. You can reduce fat, you can reduce fat, you can reduce fat percentage. Uh, but then all of us have abs. All of us have these same 600 plus muscles, just so, so that everyone knows. Everyone watching here, whether you see it or not, underneath our layers of fat, we have all have our abs and our six pack. But one thing you can do to develop and grow them, if you wanna give them shape, if you wanna give them form, if you wanna give them a bit of volume or girth to them, is you'd sit on the edge of a bench, right? And between your feet, hold a dumbbell and pull that in. So moving your knees to your chest. I don't know if you're able to do it from this angle. Do you have a chair there or something? No, not really. Okay. But, but you, you know what, I've, I've shared with you the video of what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you're on the edge of a bench and you're pulling in your knees here, right? And in between your ankles, you're holding a weight to give you some form of uh, resistance that's working against your core. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, any other questions? Any questions from anybody else watching? Varsha says, great tips. Thanks, Varsha. Yeah, Jag T Tiger definitely loves working out, lifting those weights. Uh, okay, if there were any questions I was going to answer, if there are no questions, guys, uh, we are going to wrap up now. If you're just joining now, uh, what we're doing here is we're sharing amazing progress story of Sanjit, who did the Fit Banker Challenge five years ago. He lost only five kilos. Right now, a lot of us start something and we try and do something and then we don't uh, and then we don't see results and we go back. We polarize the other way. We like saw this. I'm not doing it. Uh, there's a question from resistance band and weights. OK, I'll come to that, Daniel, in a second. Uh, and now five years on, he took it on. And from January to now, he's lost about 13 plus kilos and is reduced 9 percent body fat. So in reducing 9 percent body fat, that this is how his physique has shifted. 
And uh, what we're doing is giving him feedback on areas and muscles to develop. So one of the things that sticks out is, is he could make his lats wider, he could make his shoulders more rounder, he could have his chest coming out a bit more. And so I was giving him some feedback on what to do for that. And a big part is the style of training. So moving really slow, increasing the resistance and increasing what we call TUT, time under tension for those particular muscles. Uh, if you have resistance bands as well, you could, you could do that. You could do some of these exercises using resistance bands. Um, yeah, Daniel's asking. Yeah, in his case, he will need, uh, I don't know if that's a question, uh, Daniel, I don't know what your full question is, but um, he has some weights there. So he's going to be needing to use some weights rather than just body weight to really de develop that shape and physique. And if you have resistance bands, you can also replicate each of the exercises I was showing Sanjit using uh, resistance bands. Um, of course, from an aesthetic perspective, the first thing I said is to, uh, to shave the chest so that you can actually see the lines and see the progress. And that itself is encouraging. Question from Jyoti, what is a good starting weight for dumbbells to use? That's a great question. It's a very common question. And the answer is depends. And the depends is it depends on, first of all, what um, uh, muscle or what uh, exercise you're doing. So let's just say you want to order a pair of dumbbells for you, Jyoti. Uh, I would say, I'm going to guess here, right? I'm going to put some figures up here. If you weigh about, say, 60 kilos, as an example, Jyoti, and you're going to use dumbbells, and predominantly you're going to use them for doing bicep curls, you're going to be using them for shoulder press, and you might also be using them for holding on the side and doing lunges and squats and the likes. And if you do do that, then um, you want to, uh, you, what you want to do is hard to guess or assess without knowing your, your strength. So normally if you're with somebody that would review you, they will give you a weight and see what kind of a weight are you able to do what's called a 10 rep max, a 10 RM. So what sort of weight allows you to get to doing maximum 10 reps and then you're feeling quite spent. Uh, but I always tell uh, mm -hmm. people, if you have not been doing it, if you've not been doing a lot, a good range to get is two kilos, four kilos, five kilos, uh, and 10 kilos. And you can buy a set of two, four, five, and 10 kilo weights. Uh, and those would be good to start with. The 10 kilos, you might use them for, uh, if, if those feel heavy to you, you might use them for uh, things like squats or full body exercises. You might use them for a bent over kind of uh, deadlift. You might use them for uh, some, some back work, so the bigger muscle groups. But the twos and the fours, you could easily use them for uh, bicep curls, you could use them for shoulder press. Uh, and if you find even those are heavy, you'd start with the twos and then slowly work yourself up to the fours. Um, so that's what I would recommend, Jyoti. Uh, but you know, if you wanted to know more, you can reach out to me, we can chat and, uh, and I can get a sense of what level you're at now to know what you want to get to. Um, Varsha says, I've been doing the thousand reps challenge. Will this tone my body? Yes, it will. The thousand reps challenge guys is a challenge that we're part of, uh, that I've also joined and it's inspired by a PT called Mark Dressen and one of our coaches, Tom, uh, and friend Kate have started this, uh, challenge. It's just free running for the month of May. And what we're doing on there is a lot of body weight work. Now, the thing with you, Varsha is, uh, and a lot of people on the thousand rep challenge is so easy for a lot of people to do a uh, hundred reps of cardio -y movement, just cardio work. And then they are surprised that they've not got toning or definition in certain areas. So always remember, your bodies respond to what you're subjected to. If you want toning in the core, you got to work on core stuff. If you got, to, if you want toning on the upper body and the shoulders, you got to work there. Uh, and if you're doing full body work, another pitfall is feedback I was giving to Sandit earlier. I didn't mention it on this one, is don't hammer the same stuff every day, right? So so allow your body to have rest time for that particular region. So if he hammers his chest today, he should do three or four exercises just hammering the chest. Like he could do normal push-ups, decline push-ups, incline push-ups, maybe flies. Four exercises and then rest his chest for two full days. So on the, on the fourth day, he should come back and do chest again. Now what most people are doing, they're doing a little bit of push-ups today and squats and core, and they're doing the same again tomorrow and the same again on Wednesday, uh, you know, every other, on the third day and they're not allowing those big muscle groups to recover and you're hammering it again. So, but yes, using body weight and the thousand reps will definitely contribute to toning and also fat loss. Um, oh, you're welcome, Jyoti. Okay. 
Lovely. Okay. On that note, guys, we are going to wrap up. Thank you all for being on. As a reminder, we have a new challenge starting on the 1st of June. And uh, this sort of a session here that we're doing here, this sort of a session is not uh, what we do so much on the program, but I might introduce this for members. We have a closed group where we'll be doing this on the closed group for members so that other members can learn from it. Uh, we have a closed group called FitBanker Campus. Um, but the, the next challenge starts on the 1st of June. Uh, we provide you with the training plans. We also provide you with a group of accountability and coaches and weekly coaching calls. We provide you with the meal plan ideas and the nutrition coaching and the science so you understand it all. Uh, and, you know, here's a classic example of what's possible. Sanders, can you tell me what is one of the big changes you made to your nutrition after December, after you went back? Okay, so um, I'll have to take you back a little bit uh, further, back to 2015 when I did my challenge. Um, when I say that I dropped about 4.5 to 5 kg in 90 days, that was um, only one day at the gym in those 90 days. Uh, it was just done by cutting out sugar mainly and then uh, cutting out uh, as much as carb as possible. So it was just purely on diet. Um, and I've been following the diet uh, ever since then. I've cut out uh, sugar. And what I just do is um, avoid carbs altogether. and in the six months uh, before, in the last six months of 20... And when you say avoid carbs together, altogether, you're not having rice? Yeah, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah, let's, let's put it this way. The, the obvious carbs, uh, which is basically rice, bread, uh, roti. Um, yeah, those are the main things that I've been uh, cutting out of my diet. Um, I used to, in the last six months of 2019, I was having an occasional... Um, amount of bread or rice, uh, not rice, but mainly bread, uh, like on once a week or something like that. And what has shifted this side of uh, six months of this year is I've completely cut that out compl uh, at all. There's no there's no uh, bread, no rice, no nothing at all, not even once a week or once in 10 days. So I can't remember the last time I had uh, bread or rice. Let's put it that way. Yeah, so, so that's brilliant. Like we have people who have a view that a cheat day is once a week. And that does not work for everybody. We use the science of ectomorphs. If you're an ectomorph, you could get away with a weekly cheat day. But if you're an endomorph or a mesomorph, and Sanit is more like a mesomorph, a mesomorph is somebody who has the same body type as Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he has a potential of his body being very responsive if he gets the, the nutrition right, if he nails his protein, and if he gets the timing of his training, the type and quality of the training, and the timing and quality of protein in as well, that would really make a difference. Um, as for... Uh, the carbs, the carbs we avoid, we give you a full list of foods to avoid, but specifically what Sandit mentioned, those are called high glycemic index carbs. And what it is, is those carbs, when absorbed, they give us a very quick high blood sugar spike. And having cut those out, he's easily been seeing a lot of progress. And, and the interesting thing here, as a coach or as his brother, if I called him last year and I said, man, what are you doing? What's not happening? And I'll give you my perspective from me as a coach and my, where I experienced the tipping point is ask you, uh, are you eat right and eat healthy and avoid this and avoid that? And most of us have a response, but I'm eating everything healthy. I'm eating all fresh and organic or whatever response you say, right? People say, yet it wasn't shifting. So if something's not shifting for you, consider you're doing something that's not working. And you got to, first of all, call yourself out. And uh, there was a point when Sanjit said to me, okay, I'm doing all this, but how come I'm not losing fat? And I just said, then you're not doing it all. You're not doing it proper. The body and the system doesn't cheat. And I said, record my fitness pal. Let me look at this. Let me see all your food you're having. When did you have that? And the mind is a very poor register of how good or how bad we're doing on something. So often when I ask him whether he's eaten this crap or that junk, and he'd go one off to people's houses for dinner and there's a small dessert or a small snack. And we think it's just, it's just one bite. It's just one samosa. It's just one piece of cake. But it's too frequent enough, which means every time we're having them, we're creating a blood sugar spike. That blood sugar spike is creating an insulin release. That insulin release is keeping our bodies on a chronic insulin high. And when our body's on a chronic insulin high, we don't allow this other hormone uh, called glucagon to release. And glucagon is a hormone whose role is to break down fats and release energy into our body. So his body never got an opportunity to dig into his own fat as a source of energy, right? So instead it would go to it's continually being supplied by external glucose he's consuming and glycogen reserves in his body. And that keeps fueling and supporting him in his day. 
So he would be eating just enough to sustain and maintain a body and nothing is shifting. And now the moment we cut out those certain things, his body has to go for plan B, which is go for, for getting energy through ketones from his fat. And that's exactly what his body has done. So it's the small tweaks that we make. And then more recently, Sandy, there was something else you were eating at breakfast and I was watching you and I said, you got to cut that out now. What was that? Yeah. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, I also uh, went vegan from the beginning of the year. And uh, so oh, that yeah, is vegan friends who love this one. They're going to go to town on this. He went vegan. Let me see if there's any comments from the big vegan fans. Yeah. So that's one thing. But then I was having oats uh, as my, my cereal. So I would have oats with a bit of uh, mixed seeds, mixed nuts, and uh, uh, putting in some protein powder. Now I've actually cut off uh, the oats from the beginning of uh, this week, I think. Yeah. 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 So, so just cutting out the oats. So here's a classic example to give you guys into context. I love protein oats. I endorse them. We take them on our treks. I love oats. They're a slow burning source of energy. But when you understand your body type, I know on the days that I eat my oats, or if I'm having oats for even four days a week, and the other three days I'm having my green goddess smoothie as a breakfast, it, it doesn't allow me to progress that week. When I cut my oats out completely and like what he has done, so we might have some similar body types and some crossover in our metabolism, right? Immediately cutting out that oats in days is making a difference because he's reducing what's contributing to his glycogen reserve. Glycogen is this precursor to fat, the first thing that gets stored under our skin after we've consumed glucose, right? And it's the first go-to place for energy. And think of your body as sourcing energy in a pecking order. It will first go and check for glucose as a source, so your glycogen. If that's depleted, it then goes to the next source of energy, which is your fat or your ketones. And so it's very important that we understand how our body sources energy and how do we move it from glucose sourcing energy to fat sourcing energy. And you know what? Every gram of fat is actually nine calories of energy and every gram of carb is only four calories of energy. So when we can get our bodies to source energy from fat, we actually begin to feel a lot more energetic. So you're finding people now who are in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, they are suddenly feeling a lot more energy than they've ever felt in their life before. And this is because they've never given their body a chance to show how phenomenal, how phenomenal a miracle it is. Uh, there are some people as well in some aspects and some parts of our program where we do recommend things like fasting, intermittent fasting, reducing your what's called your digestion window uh, and allowing your digestive organs to think and all those help towards cleansing your body, pumping yourself with energy and so on. Uh, all right. Anything else? Any other questions? So those that have just joined, we're about to wrap up now, but there's Sanjit showing how he's lost 9% body fat and he's reduced 13 kilos in weight. And it's been phenomenal, phenomenal progress. And he's going to be 42 next month. And uh, what we're going to have a six pack by then? Eight pack. Eight pack, eight pack. All right, I keep forgetting. Sorry. Okay, don't forget to shave because we want to make sure we see it. And we're going to get good lighting and a nice professional cameraman because the photography can make all the difference if we get the lighting right. All right. On that note, it's a wrap. Anything else from you, Sandy, before we wrap up? No, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for everyone who's part of the community. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from a lot of other people, uh, workout buddies, uh, people on the challenge, people doing a thousand reps, um, and uh, people who are on the Fit Banker Challenge and who are busy trying to make a shift. I mean, there are people who are, you know, who have got some serious conditions and they're definitely going for it and trying to shift their body and transform their body. And even I get inspired by that. So keep going. Awesome. We've got some amazing people who've joined Kamal, Nitan. You know, there are people, their names here on the challenge why I see these people as fit banker models. Uh, Nathan, Seema, um, these are people, oh, Nina's on as well, long time. Uh, Nina Marjan, Amir, uh, Emma is already a model of ours. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys, what I really want to tell you is that you have, uh, I love it when what I would call uh, slightly heavy bodied people like I was take on the program because we can really show a good visual difference. And a key point I want you all to note is for me, transforming my relationship to certain foods I was hooked on, some of them took me doing three challenges. Sandy did his first challenge in 2015. And in 2020, beginning of 2020, end of, uh, 20, beginning of 2020, when I said uh, at 40, on my 40th birthday, I want to be a filth. That was a goal. So a filth is the male version of a MILF. And uh, I made sure I trained like an animal 
right through Christmas. While we traveled to India for a course, I came back and I was training like an animal. And I got this nice photo shoot done on my birthday and a good training videos. And I love that I got to get that done uh, for my birthday and to be in shape. Sometimes it's good giving yourself a very tight and precise deadline. And said, said, said the same. So when he's 42, he wants to also uh, have that physique and have an eight pack. Uh, and that's what he's created. So we're one month away from his birthday, uh, exactly one month away, uh, four weeks away. And uh, it will be good to see what you're gonna cause Sandit in terms of your progress and uh, let's just crush it. So like I always say, people doing this, don't wait for the big reveal at the end, but do, uh, do share your progress along the way, right? Share it with people so you inspire them, take them along, and then these people become your raving fans who are supporting you and keeping you empowered in your journey. So well done. And on that note, guys, it's a wrap. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been recorded on this uh, group, um, uh, Fed Banker Transform Billion Live, so you can watch this again from the beginning. All right. Bye for now. Bye, Sanjit. All right. Cheers. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.